Welcome to Saving Castles, the podcast for castle and chateau enthusiasts. Join us as we explore the fascinating history, stories and culture of these awe-inspiring structures, from the legends and folklore to the latest in restoration. We'll cover it all, so whether you're a seasoned castle aficionado or just discovering the magic of these magnificent buildings, this is the podcast for you. So grab your headphones and let's dive in. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the fascinating history and restoration of the Palace of Versailles. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe to the Saving Castles podcast and stay tuned for more fascinating stories about the world's most treasured architectural gems. The Palace of Versailles, a resplendent jewel in the crown of French history, represents the pinnacle of opulence and extravagance that defined the reign of King Louis XIV, also known as the Sun King. As we embark on this journey through time, let us take a moment to set the stage for this magnificent palace's story, which is as grand and awe-inspiring as the palace itself. Located southwest of Paris, the Palace of Versailles began its life as a humble hunting lodge built by King Louis XIII in 1624. In the following years, it underwent several expansions, but it was not until his son, King Louis XIV, ascended to the throne that the vision of Versailles as a sprawling royal residence began to take shape. Over several decades, the Sun King commissioned a series of ambitious construction projects, transforming the lodge into an emblem of royal power, culture, and art. This extensive building campaign commenced in 1661 and continued until the King's death in 1715. Versailles grew in size and importance, ultimately encompassing over 700 rooms spread across a 17-acre site all adorned with the most exquisite furnishings, artwork and architectural features of the time. During its heyday, the palace was not only the home of the French monarchy, but also served as the centre of government, with nobility and courtiers vying for the king's favour within its hallowed halls. However, the grandeur of Versailles came at a considerable financial cost, which contributed to the mounting economic hardships faced by the French populace. As tensions grew, culminating in the French Revolution of 1789, the royal residence would fall into disrepair and, for a time, lose its status as the nation's symbol of power and prestige. But as you will soon discover, the Palace of Versailles has weathered the storms of history and stands today as a testament to the ambition, vision, and artistic genius that brought it into existence. Perhaps the most iconic room in the entire palace is the breathtaking Hall of Mirrors. As we stroll through this 240-foot-long gallery, it is impossible not to be awestruck by the dazzling display of 357 mirrors reflecting the light from the grand chandeliers and gilded ornaments that adorn its walls and ceiling. The hall was designed as a grand passageway and space for grand receptions, where visitors would be captivated by the sheer opulence and grandeur of the French monarchy. The Hall of Mirrors was completed in 1684, the result of the combined efforts of the palace's chief architect, Jules Hardouin Mansart, and chief painter, Charles Le Brou. These two visionary artists ensured that every detail, from the intricate stucco work and the gilding of the sculptures to the awe-inspiring paintings that line the ceiling, conveyed the message of Louis XIV's power and glory. These artworks, known as the Voyages of Louis XIV, depict a series of important events during his reign, including military victories and diplomatic triumphs. At the time, the use of mirrors on such a grand scale was a bold and innovative choice. Mirrors were still a luxury item produced almost exclusively in Venice. To construct the Hall of Mirrors, France established its own mirror-making industry, which further asserted the country's economic and artistic independence. 
The hall was not only a testament to the Sun King's accomplishments, but also a symbol of France's burgeoning prowess in the arts and sciences. As we step into the Hall of Mirrors today, it is easy to imagine the elegant soirees and sumptuous banquets that took place within its walls, with the elite of French society clad in their finest attire, dancing and conversing beneath the shimmering chandelier. The Hall has borne witness to many significant moments in history, including the signing of the Treaty of Versailles in 1919, which marked the official end of World War I. As we continue our journey through the palace, the echoes of the past remain ever-present within the Hall of Mirrors, a dazzling reminder of a bygone era of unparalleled splendor. Now, let us step outside the palace and venture into the equally magnificent gardens of Versailles. Designed by the legendary landscape architect André Lenotre, the gardens are an integral part of the palace's narrative, representing the Sun King's control over nature and his kingdom, sprawling over almost two thousand acres. These meticulously landscaped grounds are a stunning example of French formal gardens, with their geometric patterns, symmetrical designs, and carefully sculpted greenery. The gardens took nearly forty years to complete, with Le Notre working closely alongside architect Louis Laveau and painter Charles Lebrun. As we meander through the carefully planned alleys, we discover numerous fountains, sculptures, and parterres, each one more impressive than the last. The intricate design of the gardens is punctuated by the awe-inspiring Grand Canal, a 1.67-kilometre-long artificial waterway that once served as the backdrop for opulent nautical parties and performances. At the heart of the gardens lies the majestic fountain of Apollo, depicting the Sun King's mythological namesake driving his chariot across the sky. Created by renowned sculptor Jean-Baptiste Toubé, the fountain symbolizes Louis XIV's power and dominion over both nature and his realm. As the sun sets over the gardens, casting its golden rays upon the magnificent sculptures and reflecting pools, it is clear that the gardens are an essential counterpart to the palace, a living testament to the ambition and vision of the Sun King. However, the brilliance of Versailles could not shield it from the winds of change that would sweep across France in the late 18th century. As the French Revolution erupted in 1789, fueled by years of economic hardship and growing resentment towards the monarchy, the once imposing palace would soon become a symbol of the nation's struggle for equality and freedom. During this tumultuous period, the palace was ransacked and looted, with priceless treasures sold off or destroyed. The royal family, including King Louis XVI and his wife, Marie Antoinette, were forcibly removed from Versailles and imprisoned in Paris, where they would eventually meet their tragic end at the guillotine. The palace itself was closed off to the public its once bustling halls, now filled with an eerie silence. In the years that followed, the palace would undergo several transformations. Under Napoleon Bonaparte, it was briefly converted into a museum dedicated to the achievements of the French Empire. While the palace would regain some of its former glory during this time, it was only a shadow of its magnificent past, a poignant reminder of a fallen monarchy and a world that had forever changed. As we delve into the 19th and early 20th centuries, we find that the Palace of Versailles once again became a focal point for the French nation, as efforts began to preserve and restore what remained of this architectural masterpiece. Recognizing the palace's historical and cultural significance, French authorities embarked on an extensive campaign to return Versailles to its former glory. The painstaking process of restoration involved numerous large-scale projects, such as the repair of the palace's stonework, the recreation of its opulent interiors, and the restoration of its sprawling gardens. These efforts attracted the attention and support of skilled craftsmen, artisans, and historians, all dedicated to bringing the Sun King's vision back to life. 
One of the most significant early restoration projects was the refurbishment of the Royal Chapel, which was completed in 1873. This religious space, designed by Jews Hardwin Mansart and Robert de Cotte, was once the heart of the palace's spiritual life, where daily mass and important ceremonies were held. As workers carefully restored the chapel's exquisite stained-glass windows, gilded woodwork and magnificent frescoes, it became a symbol of the palace's rebirth. Yet the journey towards restoration was not without its setbacks. In 1871, during the turmoil of the Paris Commune, a fire swept through the palace, causing extensive damage. Undeterred, the dedicated team of restorers persevered, continuing their work to ensure that Versailles would once again stand as a testament to France's rich history and artistic legacy. Despite the passion and commitment of those involved in the restoration of Versailles, the process was fraught with challenges and controversies. Balancing the desire to maintain historical accuracy with the need to modernize the palace for contemporary use was a delicate task, often prompting heated debates among conservators, architects, and historians. One of the most pressing concerns was updating the palace's aging infrastructure, such as its electrical and plumbing systems, without compromising the building's historical integrity. Additionally, the introduction of climate control systems was necessary to preserve the palace's priceless art and artifacts, but doing so in a manner that was sensitive to the palace's original design was no easy feat. Another point of contention revolved around the building's appearance. Should the palace be restored to a pristine state, as it would have appeared in its heyday, or should the visible signs of ageing be preserved to honour the passage of time and the palace's tumultuous history? This ongoing debate has shaped the restoration process as experts strive to strike the right balance between preservation and renewal. In addition to the main palace, our journey through the restoration of Versailles takes us to the Grand Trianon and the Petit Trianon, two smaller palaces nestled within the sprawling grounds of the estate. While lesser known than their grander counterpart, these residences played a crucial role in the lives of the French monarchy, serving as private retreats, away from the hectic demands of court life. The Grand Trianon, a magnificent palace built by Jules Hardwin Mansart for King Louis XIV in 1687, is an elegant testament to the king's passion for architecture and the arts. With its striking pink marble façade, the palace was designed as a harmonious blend of architecture and nature, providing the Sun King and his family with a tranquil refuge from the main palace's elaborate ceremonies and formalities. The Petit Trianon, built by architect Ainge Gabriel for King Louis XV in 1768, is an exquisite example of neoclassical architecture, characterized by its simplicity and refined elegance. The Petit Trianon would become especially dear to Queen Marie Antoinette, who frequently retreated to the residence to escape the pressures of her royal duties. The restoration of both the Grand Trianon and Petit Trianon presented unique challenges as conservators worked to preserve the palace's distinctive architectural features and lavish interiors while ensuring they remain structurally sound and functional. Through the dedicated efforts of architects, artisans, and historians, these cherished royal retreats have been restored to their former glory, allowing visitors to experience a more intimate side of French royal life, and offering a glimpse into the private world of the kings and queens who once called Versailles home. Central to the ongoing restoration efforts of Versailles is the meticulous conservation and preservation of its priceless art and artifacts, which include not only paintings and sculptures, but also furniture, tapestries, and decorative objects. These precious pieces offer invaluable insight into the lives of the French monarchy, as well as the artistic and cultural movements of their time. One significant undertaking in this area has been the restoration of the palace's vast collection of paintings, many of which were commissioned directly by Louis XIV or other members of the royal family. 
Masterpieces by celebrated artists such as Charles Le Brun, Peter Paul Rubens and Francois Boucher grace the walls of Versailles, each one bearing witness to the artistic genius that flourished under the patronage of the French monarchy. In addition to paintings, the palace's sculptural collection has also been the focus of careful conservation work, from monumental marble statues to delicate gilt bronze clocks, these works of art reflect the astonishing skill and creativity of the craftsmen who created them. A notable example is the ongoing restoration of the palace's numerous fountains, many of which feature intricately carved sculptures that require specialized care and attention to return them to their original splendor. As we explore the palace's beautifully restored galleries and chambers, we are reminded that the art and artifacts of Versailles are not merely decorative. They are an integral part of the palace's rich historical tapestry, embodying the spirit and ambition of the Sun, King, and his successors. In our journey through the restoration of Versailles, we now turn our attention to the Queen's Hamlet, a charming rustic retreat located near the Petite Trianon. This idyllic village, complete with a farmhouse, mill and dairy, was created for Marie Antoinette in the 1780s as a place where she could escape the formalities of court life and indulge in simpler, more pastoral pursuits. The Queen's Hamlet, designed by architect Richard Meek, is a fascinating blend of whimsy and refinement, its picturesque cottages and winding pathways evoking the rural landscapes of 18th century France. It was here that Marie Antoinette would spend her days tending to her animals, picnicking with friends, or strolling through the beautifully landscaped gardens. The restoration of the Queen's Hamlet has been a labour of love for many, with efforts focused on preserving its unique architectural features and returning the village to its original appearance. This has included the meticulous refurbishment of the cottage's delicate woodwork and the restoration of the charming, flower-filled gardens that surround them. As we wander through this enchanting corner of Versailles, it is not difficult to imagine Marie Antoinette dressed in simple peasant attire, delighting in the beauty and tranquility of her beloved Hamlet. Our exploration of the restoration of Versailles would not be complete without a visit to the dazzling Royal Opera House, an architectural and artistic masterpiece that is considered one of the finest examples of 18th century theatre design. Completed in 1770 to celebrate the marriage of the Dauphin, Louis XVI, to Marie Antoinette, the Opera House was designed by architect Ange Gabriel, who ingeniously integrated its structure into the existing fabric of the palace. The Royal Opera House, with its exquisite woodwork, gold leaf detailing and delicate frescoes, is a testament to the artistic vision of its creators, as well as the extraordinary talent of the craftsmen who brought it to life. Over the centuries, however, the theatre had fallen into disrepair, its once glorious interiors tarnished by the passage of time. The restoration of the Opera House, which began in the early 2000s, was a massive undertaking, requiring the collaboration of historians, architects and artisans to ensure its delicate features were preserved and restored to their original splendour. This process included the painstaking conservation of the theatre's original woodwork, the application of thousands of sheets of gold leaf and the recreation of its intricate ceiling frescoes. Today, the Royal Opera House has been returned to its former glory, providing a breathtaking venue for concerts, ballets, and other cultural events. As we marvel at the sumptuous surroundings, it is as though we have stepped back in time to the days when the Sun King's court gathered here to revel in the beauty of the performing arts. In our exploration of the restoration of Versailles, it is essential to recognize the role that technology has played in bringing the palace and its treasures back to life. Modern technological advancements have provided conservators and restorers with an array of tools that have greatly enhanced their ability to preserve and protect the palace's invaluable cultural heritage.
For instance, advanced imaging techniques such as infrared reflectography and X-ray fluorescence have allowed experts to examine the layers of paint beneath the surface of a painting, revealing hidden details and informing restoration decisions. Likewise, laser cleaning has revolutionized the process of removing centuries-old dirt and grime from delicate surfaces, such as the palace's gilded woodwork, without causing damage to the underlying material. Another fascinating application of technology at Versailles is the use of 3D printing and digital fabrication to recreate missing or damaged elements of the palace's architecture and decor. Using high-resolution scans of existing pieces, artisans are able to create accurate replicas that blend seamlessly with the original structure. These cutting-edge technologies, combined with the expertise of conservators, architects, and historians, have greatly facilitated the restoration process, ensuring that the Palace of Versailles will continue to shine as a beacon of France's cultural heritage for generations to come. In addition to the physical restoration of the palace, the ongoing efforts to preserve and protect Versailles have also focused on fostering a deeper appreciation and understanding of its rich history and cultural significance. To this end, the palace has implemented a variety of educational programs and initiatives aimed at engaging the public and fostering a sense of connection to this magnificent heritage site. These programs include guided tours, workshops, and lectures that delve into the palace's architectural and artistic history, as well as the lives of the men and women who once inhabited its opulent halls. Through immersive exhibitions, interactive displays, and the use of cutting-edge digital technology, visitors are invited to step back in time and experience the splendor of Versailles as it would have appeared in its heyday. Educational outreach efforts have also extended beyond the palace's walls, with the creation of digital resources such as virtual tours and online exhibits that make the treasures of Versailles accessible to a global audience. These initiatives not only enrich the visitor experience, but also help to ensure that the palace's legacy is preserved and appreciated by future generations. As we look towards the future of Versailles, one of the most pressing challenges facing the palace is the need to balance its preservation with the demands of the millions of tourists who visit each year. Sustainable tourism practices have become a critical aspect of the palace's ongoing restoration efforts as it seeks to minimize its environmental impact and protect its priceless cultural heritage. To address this challenge, the palace has implemented a variety of measures aimed at promoting responsible tourism, such as encouraging the use of public transportation, limiting visitor numbers during peak seasons, and implementing strict guidelines for visitor behavior within the palace grounds. Additionally, the palace has made significant investments in green initiatives such as energy-efficient lighting, rainwater harvesting, and the use of eco-friendly materials in restoration projects. By adopting sustainable practices, Versailles is not only preserving its past, but also securing its future as a beloved destination for visitors from around the world. The ongoing efforts to maintain and protect this extraordinary site are a testament to the enduring appeal of the palace and the dedication of those who work tirelessly to ensure its continued survival. Our exploration of the restoration of Versailles would be incomplete without addressing the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic, which has had far-reaching consequences for cultural heritage sites worldwide. The closure of the palace during the height of the pandemic led to significant financial losses as ticket sales and other revenue streams dried up, threatening the continuation of restoration projects. In response to these challenges, the palace has sought innovative solutions to generate income and maintain public interest during these difficult times. These have included virtual tours, online events, and crowdfunding campaigns to support restoration efforts, as well as temporary exhibitions and outdoor events that allow visitors to experience the beauty of the palace and its garden.
The pandemic has also highlighted the importance of digital technologies in preserving and sharing cultural heritage, as well as the need to foster a greater sense of connection and engagement with our shared past. As we look towards a post-pandemic future, the lessons learned during these unprecedented times will undoubtedly continue to shape the restoration and preservation of Versailles and other cultural treasures around the globe. In conclusion, our journey through the restoration of Versailles has taken us on a fascinating exploration of the palace's storied past, as well as the dedicated efforts of countless individuals who have laboured to preserve and protect its legacy. From the painstaking conservation of its priceless art and artefacts to the careful balance of historical accuracy and modern innovation, the restoration of Versailles is a testament to the enduring appeal of this magnificent symbol of French culture and history. As we look to the future, the challenges facing the Palace of Versailles, such as the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic and the need for sustainable tourism practices, serve as a reminder of the importance of safeguarding our shared cultural heritage for future generations. Through the ongoing efforts of historians, architects, artisans, and countless others, the legacy of the Sun King and the palace that bears his imprint will continue to inspire and captivate visitors from around the world for years to come. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the Saving Castles podcast. Stay tuned for our next episode where we'll continue to explore the fascinating world of castles and chateaus. Don't miss out and subscribe to our podcast to get notified when new episodes are released. For more information about us and our work, visit savingcastles.com. Thank you for listening.